I'm here with Peter Cornell. Peter, you uh, gave a very, very nice talk on a retrospective study uh, following implantation of a particular sort of torque lens. Let me get you to discuss what the lens is and what the design is first, then we can talk a little bit more about your study. Okay. So, thank you, yes. Uh, the TrueLine Intraocular Accommodating Lens is manufactured by Bausch & Lohms. It is a uh, silicone-based lens that has flexible haptics and allows it to provide some range of accommodation so that you get very good distance vision, very good intermediate vision, and some level of reading vision. So, what, what is the, um, and, and, and I'm not, I'm not talking about the data from your study, but in general with the lens. Uh, what is the dioptric range for accommodation with this lens? Well, it, it is, it's extremely variable, and that's what's interesting about this lens. I have lots and lots of patients that have very good distance intermediate and near vision without correction, and there's a percentage that get good distance intermediate. But in overall, we generally think about the accommodative, accommodative range as somewhere around one and a half to one and a quarter diopters. Now, uh, you did a, a retrospective study, 93 eyes, is that, that's that correct? That's correct. Uh, over what time period were they followed? So, um, the uh, surgeries were done over a two-year period, and I was looking at one month data. And what are the main outcome measures that you followed from your study? So the main things I was looking at were what the uh, mean spherical refractive error was, uh, what the mean deviation from SRKT target was, and particularly importantly, the uncorrected distance intermediate and near vision of eyes that were targeted for distance vision. And Peter, what did you find? What were your, your results? So the results were the mean spherical error was about uh, minus 0 0.23 diopters. Uh, the mean deviation from the target of the SRKT formula was minus 0 0.15 diopter. The uncorrected distance visual acuity monocular for all eyes was 93.5 percent were 20-25 or better. For intermediate vision, 78.5 percent were 20-25 or better, and for near, about 68.8 percent were J3 or better. Did, did you did you look? Do, do you have a, a gross sense of patient satisfaction with this lens? Yeah, and that's actually very easy. This is kind of my fastball go-to lens because patients are very happy as long as expectations are set appropriately, and they know what they're going to be looking at afterwards. The distance vision is very, very good. And the binocular vision, which I did not report on on this study, is of course much better than the monocular vision. So essentially all patients had excellent distance vision, excellent intermediate vision, and many of them, about 50 percent, are actually glasses independent for near, and the other 50 percent at most need a weak over-the-counter 125 magnifying glass. Now, given that, 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 that they get this, this sort of range, with with the with the vision with these patients, do you typically aim both eyes for for plano, or do you do a little staggered, little mini monovision? So what I do is I always do the dominant eye first, and I target that dominant eye for distance vision, and then I actually prepare the patients by talking with them in advance, and on the pre-op for the second eye, I manually hold up lenses and let the patient decide how much change they want. So in a patient that's already getting very good distance intermediate and near, in the first eye, I'm gonna target Plano in the second eye. But typically the average for my second eye is probably between minus a quarter and minus three quarters. For um, physicians who are not used to using this particular lens model, do you have any, any quick little pearls that might be helpful? Yeah, this is, this is a lens that, that requires what most ophthalmologists do really well anyway, and that's a real commitment to excellent surgery. So it's a surgery that all the details have to be done really, really well. So very, very important points is that you have to do all your preoperative measurements carefully. We often bring pa patients back two or three times to remeasure for to get correct K readings. Um, during the surgery itself, you have to polish the capsule very, very aggressively, both anterior and posterior. It's very important to get the lens alignment correct, and that's very easy with this lens because you can rotate it either way a little bit, but based on your pre-K readings, make sure the incision is very well sealed, uh, and of course the real basics, making sure you put the lens in right side up, that's very important. But all of these small things that really add together make a real difference in the results. Oh, and an extremely aggressive cortical cleanup. You have to get every bit of cortex out. Oh, the, this is very, very helpful stuff. It's exciting stuff, Peter. I'm very happy that, 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 you've, that you've brought this to us, uh, that you've been so generous with your time with us today. Thank you.